were you uh, making the sets so that the public could watch your broadcasting, or were you in broadcasting so you could sell more sets? Was that a was that a, <laughs> a, a, a clear well, vision? Uh, Alan, with the help of other people who were helping finance the early part of the company, wanted to do both. They wanted to be a manufacturer of receivers and sell that and also a manufacturer of broadcasting studio equipment. That came a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And also um, putting in stations, like we did in New York and then Washington, D.C., we'll talk about that later, mm -hmm. um, to broadcast programs. And Alan had a third objective. He started educational television in New Jersey in the early days under the Alan B. Dumont Foundation he took some money from the company, some stock, and donated to the foundation. I'm still treasurer of that foundation and one of the trustees. There's only two trustees living now. So the assets of that foundation have been turned over to the Radio Club of America now. But uh, that foundation started with the Montclair State College with D. Elton Partridge as president, who endeavored to work it out that he would go into educational television with very little funds. So the foundation funded those early experiments. And Elma Engstrom and I, Elma Engstrom is a top engineering vice president of Radio Corporation of America. Elma, Elma Engstrom and Tom Goldsmith and Alan Dumont were on this um, uh, Montclair University, the Upper Montclair uh, College. Um, in the establishment of educational television. 